Sean, we often talk about how exciting it is for fight week, especially when we have a gap between the last card and the upcoming card. But the most important thing, the thing we really look forward to, it's not really the weigh-ins, it's not the like interviews. It might be this preview show because you know these are always good, but it's the fight. But luckily for us, in the next seven days coming up, we have three fight cards culminating on, of course, Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. But starting with Max Holloway versus Calvin Cater and a card which I think is sneaky good. So let's break this one down. But before we jump into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get our future videos, including that Connor versus Poirier breakdown, which you're not, you don't want to miss. But let's start with this one. Main event, Sean. There's two storylines that interest me coming into this. One on one side and one on the other side. So you have Max Holloway coming in, former champion, has only lost to the champion in recent memory at Featherweight in two incredibly close fights. So he's coming in here against a guy who was ranked, I believe, number six. And I think there's going to be questions about his mindset coming into this one, and we can chat about that. But also then on the flip side, you have the storyline of Calvin Cater, who has been around for a long time. He might be even it's fighting long longer. Time. It might be even longer than Holloway. I'm not quite sure. I, prob- a, I believe he's been a pro like 15 years or something. Yeah, like he was on an elite, yeah, an elite XC card back in the day. So he's been around a long time. But it's finally just kind of breaking through now and who has this huge opportunity against a guy who, in a lot of people's minds, and I think both our minds, probably should be the champion right now. So of the two storylines, which one are you most intrigued by? The Max Holloway side or the Calvin Cater side? Uh, Probably for me, the Max Holloway one, to be honest. I think there's a lot going on with the Max one to digest. So like, John Anik actually made a really good point in his media scrum this week. He said... um, he said, I wouldn't like to be the guy facing Max Holloway after the Volkanovski loss. Because I think most people feel like he won the fight. To me, he won the fight. I think he made some phenomenal adjustments from that first fight. We got kind of outclassed in that first fight and caught, caught on the hop. Um, I think the camp, uh, Eugene Bellman speaks like amazingly highly of that uh, Holloway camp. And they're probably, they probably are an underrated camp just because Max is their only guy. Mm. And they're Max's only team like um, compared to some of the major MMA camps that you see. And um, we probably don't speak about them enough. And B- Bellman rates them so highly, and I think that's a lot of that's a very high praise. Um, so I think they'll be they'll be more than pumped coming into this and want to make a statement because they will want that third fight with with Volkanovski. Um, so yeah, I think that's an interesting storyline. I think there's always questions around Max and how, how he makes the weight and what's he like at 45 mm. and is he on the decline? And I think the stuff with Max is he on the decline? I think that's kind of gets something that 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 gets put out just because of it does sometimes sound a bit punch drunk. He does sometimes slow mm. his words. Um, I don't think he's on the decline. I thought he looked fantastic against Volkanovski last time out. Um, and I think he'll more than want to put on a performance. I think he'll have a, a rocket up his arse to say this performance <laughs> to want to prove a few people wrong. Yeah, so to talk about Max Holloway and kind of what I was getting into about his mindset. Mm. Coming off them two losses, um, if you go and you watch any of Max's interviews uh, coming into this fight week, you can clearly see that he believes that he won the second one at least. Um, and he feels a little bit hard done by so do you fear uh, for Max Holloway coming into this one that he'll underestimate uh, Calvin Cater? I don't think he's that kind of guy, but considering what level he's at and considering like what people were saying before he lost, people talking about him being the best featherweight of all time, and he could probably still make that argument. Yeah. But do you see anything in Max Holloway coming into this that you'd be fearful that he's going to overlook Calvin Cater? Uh, no, it's not something I'd be worried about. I mean, you don't go on the kind of run he went on at featherweight um, by being someone who is complacent. Um, I think you give uh, Kato the full respect he deserves. Um, yeah, I don't expect any, any complacency from Max in this one. I think I, I, I genuinely think he'll have a rocket up his arse um, just because of losing. I think he'll use the, the Volkanovski, the second Volkanovski loss as the right kind of motivation. Um, I think it's fair enough to believe he won the fight. I thought he won the fight. Yeah. Um, but I think you have to channel that like that frustration with that correctly and I, I would expect Max to he's been a champion for so long I think he'll channel that correctly yeah before we talk about Cater um, one more thing on Max do you think um, and this is something that I'm, I'm trying to think about do you think that he will change his style at all coming into this one because after two really close fights where a lot of people said that he he didn't fade but he, he maybe put the, the foot off the gas late in that last one do you think his style will change he'll maybe look for the finish a little bit more because that's something he's been talking about saying I shouldn't have left it in the hands of the judges or do you feel like he'll be the same Max Holloway and he'll come in and that's not a bad thing because yeah. Max is one of the best of all time but do you, do you anticipate any change in Max? 
Um, it's an interesting question. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I mean, I think Volkanovski is a very specific type of fighter that you may have to change your style he, for. Do you know who he reminds me of? He reminds me a little bit of Lieto Machida back in the day. Yeah. Like the Machida puzzle where people couldn't quite figure him out. That's yeah. what it feels like right now with, with Volkanovski. Yeah, and I think it, like he's not city kickboxing, but he has that camp with Eugene Bellman and a couple of other guys where they are that tricky style. That they're, they're, they're a puzzle that's yet to be figured out. Yeah. Um, I think... Not that he, he's a guy, obviously Max hasn't fought Keira before, but I think, I don't, no, I'm not sure if Keira presents any problems that Max won't know how to figure out. Um, I agree. Compared to how Vol- the, the problems that Volkanovski can present. And I thought Max done a phenomenal job in that second fight of actually trying to find solutions to those problems that he couldn't in the first fight. But yeah, I, I no, I don't think there's anything in this fight that Max would need to change his style to. Yeah, uh, and speaking of Calvin Cater, we have to give him his due because he's on an incredible yeah. run. Um, his last couple of fights were great performances with some questions, I think, that we'll yeah. talk about. But him coming in here now, huge opportunity. I mean, it's not often that you'll get to fight the number two guy when you're not ranked number three or number four. He's ranked number six right now. You can argue where he should be placed in the rankings. But, like, man, outside of the champion, this is the biggest fight in the division by a stretch. So huge opportunity for him and um, we've seen him go five rounds in his last fight, which was good. But how do you feel his mindset will be coming into this one um, looking at this as this huge opportunity? I think Calvin Keita just kind of had some respect on his name. Um, mm. I mean, he's been around a while and it's unusual to see. I mean, you do see it sometimes with guys in MMA where they, they are around for a while and don't actually sort of break through but it's unusual that they go on for this long and actually then break through um, yeah. so I think yeah, kind of Masvidalian a little yeah, bit yeah I think he just wants some respect on his name and he'll have a, a, a be in his bonnet about that as well so I think he'll want to put on a performance yeah um, but great fight let's talk about it as well just the, the actual get into like predictions and stuff like that um, for me I'll say I'm leaning towards Max Holloway I think um, regardless of kind of the results of the last few fights I think he looked good in both both of them, especially the second one. I thought he made some great adjustments. Um, but one thing I'm I'm looking at is the comparisons between Poirier and Cater because I do think they do some similar things. They obviously have a very boxing heavy style. I don't think Cater kicks as much as Poirier, which I think would be a good thing for Max because they cause him some problems against the last two opponents. But I just feel like Max has seen this kind of style. You spoke about it there a minute ago. I don't think cater is going to show anything different but i do think max has 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 to improve on how he fought against poirier because he's going to see some similar things especially um when he presses and the guy will allow him to draw onto him and he'll try counter i think we're going to see a lot of that with calvin and if max isn't you know uh, defensively sound cater might be able to catch him and hurt him um but i think there's a power difference there too but how do you see technically and kind of how this fight will go i think the, the, I think the avenues to uh, hurt, not hurt, but like to get at both fighters are kind of there. Um, I don't think you'll have to do anything new or spectacular to actually see how you can get up either fighter. I mean, Mikano got at Kato with the leg kicks. Uh, mm. Zabi, Kato started quite slow against Zabi and that probably undone him in the end. Um, I think with Max, I mean, Dustin has done it. Connor done it. It was a long time ago, but yeah, yeah, Dustin has done it. Um, Volkanovski has done it. I mean, the, both guys kind of lean heavy on that front leg. Max switches it a bit more, so it's a bit harder to get at. But um, yeah, I think I think it's a good matchup for both. I think both will like it. It'll stay, I, I expect it to stay largely on the feet. I don't expect to see it to go on the ground. So yeah, um, without giving me your pick, do you think it goes to decision or is it a finish? Yeah, I I quite like the fight to go to the distance. To be honest, same. Yeah, me too. I don't. Yeah. I don't see Max getting finished, um, and I don't. I'm not sure if I see Max getting the finish on Kate right now. But I, no. I think. I think Max is probably the more likely to get a finish. But I. Just, I. I don't particularly see it this fight. Yeah, uh, I think one of the interesting things uh, for Kate who has shown a similar uh, kind of tendency to Max to be able to stay strong late in the fight or even grow stronger late in the fight, because as we know, Max Holloway those championship rounds are usually where he does his best work. Yeah, Max had to, five rounds all day. Yeah, he had some issues in his last one, but um, it'd be interesting to see if Calvin can keep that pace up, um, especially with Max's volume. Um, but yeah, I'm leaning towards Max Holloway. I'm going to say Max Holloway decision. I think uh, Cater might take a round or two, maybe early, um, maybe the first or the second, because Max sometimes takes some time to, to kind of, you know, 
get his thing going. Yeah. But I'm going to go Max Holloway with a clear enough decision. I don't think it's going to be controversial. I think clear enough decision. Yeah, I'm going to follow that as well. I think Max by decision. Cool. I was about to do um, a full Brendan Schaub there and say Max inside the distance by decision. <laughs> Um, in terms of the odds on this one, I assume Max Holloway is a bit of a favour. Yeah, um, yeah, a big, a big enough favour. He's eight to fifteen, and Cater is six to four. Um, eight to fifteen. I, I don't know if I'd be betting on that. It's probably a little bit short for me. If I was yeah. having a bet here, yeah, I'd probably look at Max by decision, which you can get at six to five. Yeah, and what is the what is it just to go the distance? To go to distance, I believe, is around the 8 to 15 mark as well, or 8 to 13. That's not bad. Um, yeah, it's all right for a multiple, but some places don't let you put them in multiples, which is a little bit annoying. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. Will the fight go to distance? Yes, 4 to 6. So there you go. Yeah. I like Max Holloway. I'd probably bet on him. If I'm going to do a bet, I'll probably stick him in accumulator yeah. somewhere. I do probably like him good. here. Um, Carlos Conde and Matt Brown in the co-main event. Um, Kind of interesting storyline going into this one on both sides mm. as well because you have Carlos Conde who's coming in on the last fight of his contract with the UFC. He says he will consider other organizations. Um, and then on Matt Brown's side, he says that this could be his last fight. So kind of similar, they're kind of looking forward. Carlos is looking to continue fighting, but maybe not in the UFC. And Matt Brown potentially could be the last one. Usually I'm very mm, concerned about fighters who say this might be, be, might be my last fight and um, because I feel like maybe they're not putting everything into it. But I think Matt Brown, because of how long he's been fighting, because he said this a few times already, he said he was considering retirement already and looked good after that. I don't have a huge problem with that, but um, in terms of the actual fight and how you think it's going to go, which way are you leaning on this one, Sean? Um, I really like the matchmaking. I think it's good matchmaking. I think they're, they're two legends of the sport. They've been around a long time. They've paid their dues. Um, I really like the matchmaking, putting them against each other. It's kind. Of, it's a Legends League fight if we had a Legends League. Um, yeah. And it's it's a good fight for two guys who are past the, the, the prime and who but who want to still fight um, rather than putting them in against some ridiculous prospect who who is going to like wreck them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm not expecting an overly entertaining fight, to be totally honest. Um, I don't know. I'm not massively looking forward to it. I, I think both guys have... I think there's question marks on both guys on how they've looked uh, in the previous few fights. I mean, the, the records in the last six fights aren't good. I think it's two and four and one and five, is it? Yeah, I'm exactly. Right. Something like um, that, yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Um, yeah. I think the big thing with Carlos Conde, the problem he's had in his last few fights... Um, apart from the last one that he won, was that he's been put in there against guys who are primarily strikers, or pri- primarily grapplers, sorry. Yeah. Um, and Carlos has very poor takedown defense, we know this. Um, so he went in there last time against Court McGee, who does have takedowns, but decided to strike with him, probably because they were friends. Um, and Carlos looked good. Um, so in this one, I don't think Matt Brown is going to look to grapple, although he does have that in his back pocket and he has done that before. Look at like the Steve, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson fight, although I think even then Wonderboy had worse state on defense than Carlos. Um, so unless Matt Brown comes out here and lands a big shot that hurts Conde, which is kind of hard to do. He's never been finished by strikes apart from that one time where he blew out, blew out his ACL or something like that yeah. against Tyron Woodley. Um I think Carlos takes this because I think he's a slicker striker and I don't think there's the concerns about his durability as much as the concerns about the durability of um, of Brown are because, uh, yeah, he's he's kind of got finished in a few of his last few fights. So yeah, I'm I mean, leaning I'm leaning Carlos Conley. In those four, of, Matt Brown is two and four in his last six um, and he's lost all four of those by finish. Um, yeah. Three of them were by uh, TKO and then one submission. So yeah. There you go. And then on the flip side, I assume a lot of them were decisions for Conde or else um, submissions. Because you know, I know you got submitted by a few guys, including Damian Moya. Yeah, uh, I'm just pulling up the topology now to have a look. Yeah, well, a couple of finish. Yeah, a lot of submissions. One real yeah. naked choke, or you, uh, decision unanimous, decision split. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of that was heavy top grappling. Carlos not being able to do something because Carlos has always been that guy who take me down and I'll try to submit you off my back and against really top heavy wrestlers that's really hard to do especially these days so um, but I'm leaning Carlos Conde I have maybe a finish but I'd probably be more comfortable with a, a dominant enough decision yeah I would be leaning probably Carlos Conde um, I mean if you want the odds it's 8-15 to 15, Carlos Conde 6-4 Matt Brown makes sense 
this isn't a fight I'd be having a bet on personally. I would be staying well away from this. Uh, to go the distance is nine to ten. Uh, to not go the distance is nine to ten. There's a nice bit of margin for you. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, if if you want to have a bet, more power to you. Um, I probably lean in Carlos Condit to take a pick. Then I mean, Matt Brown's durability can be questioned at the minute, so you maybe yeah. you could have a go with Carlos Condit by Kale. Yeah. Cool. I'd I'd probably put something on it, but yeah, I do agree. It's there's a there's a, a few questions about both guys. Uh, Santiago uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio, Jesus, uh, returns Not against that long, Rob, has he? He has. He's been out for two years or something against Jing Liang Li. Um, interesting fight. This is short notice for Jing Liang, I believe. Um, Santiago was supposed to fight somebody else. I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been uh, one of the Russian guys. Um, but Santiago, as we said, has been out for a long time. Um, he was a top contender when he left the division. Um, he Locked got sick. Lock, of course, yeah, it's, that just happens. But he got sick. He had an infection in his blood, I believe. And then it was an infection in his bone, which uh, was actually career threatening. So, and I don't know if it was life threatening, but it sounds like it. So he's been out for a long time. Now, I did see the weigh-ins today and he actually looked good on the scales. Um, so... That's a good sign because I was worried because I know he lost a lot of weight, which is obvious if you have that. Um, so I was worried a bit on how he would look when he came back physically. And he actually looks pretty good. So I'm happy about that. Um, but interesting fight to come back to. I think it's a huge step down from where he was. Um, mm-hmm. No offense to Jing Liang. But um, it's also a tough one because Li is durable. He's aggressive when he wants to be, especially when he has a guy hurt. And when Santiago fought guys like Mike Perry, for example, he had a few issues. Even though Mike Perry might not be the most technical and best striker in the world, he still landed quite a lot on Santiago. So someone like Jing Liang might be able to land some shots. And from what I saw with the odds, they were quite wide for a guy who was out for two years. Yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you said. I like the matchmaking, to be honest. I think it's a good fight. It's a good yardstick of where Ponzinibbio was at now with the comeback. I mean... If you're not giving him, if he can't beat a guy like Lee, um, mm. where is he going really? After all the injuries, um, yeah. I think it's I think it's a really good fight for him to come back. To. I think it's very winnable. Um, I mean, Ponzi Nubio was a problem in that welterweight division before all these yes. injuries. I mean, he Big flatlined time. he flatlined Neil Magny um, in his previous uh, headline fight in Argentina, I believe. I think he's on like a seven fight win streak. Mm. So I mean, I think he's he's a guy with a win here and maybe another win this year can catapult up that division quite quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I at the odds the odds are quite wide. I I kind of like um maybe a decision. I'm mm. not so sure. Um Ponzi Nubia 1 to 3 uh Zhang Ling Li 9 to 4. That's a hard name to say, I'm not going to lay. Yeah. Uh yeah, Ponzi Nubia 1 to 3 and then 9 to 4 on Li. And the guy who Ponzi Nubia was supposed to fight, you're right, it was a short notice, it was uh Muslim Salikov. That's right, yeah. Which would have been a good fight too. Um yeah. probably a little bit trickier, trickier than uh Jin Liang in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I do agree. I'm going to go um, Ponza Nibio on this one. I do have some concerns about that time off. But I think if he didn't have that time off, it'd be a no-brainer. Ponza Nibio all day, every day, you know? Yeah, um, again, not too sure about a bet in this one. I mean, Ponza Nibio on the three probably isn't for me. Um, I'd probably lean towards the decision maybe, um, yeah. if anything. But yeah, not not overly keen on a bet in this fight. So essentially, Sean right now is don't bet on any of the fights, just bet on them all to go to decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay not to have a bet. Sometimes you need to be... Yeah, exactly. Be responsible. Yeah, you don't need to have a bet on everyone. Yeah. Um, next fight, Joaquin Buckley returns to fight Alessio de Chirico. This one is interesting matchmaking. It's... Um, it's one I, I understand, but I don't understand in certain ways. So Joaquin Buckley, of course, had that incredible fight of or knockout of the year last year with the spinning back kick from getting his foot caught. Um, and he had also another great finish as well. And uh, he was looking to fight James Krause, which would have been a nice step up in competition, a bit of a name. Um, but for some reason, the UFC went in a different direction. And according to James Krause and Joaquin Buckley, it just wasn't a fight the UFC really pursued so that tells me him fighting Alessio de Chirico here who was on a three fight losing streak mm. that the UFC are going to slow roll Joaquin Buckley that's his build they're going to slow roll him they're not going to throw him to the wolves too quickly and um, I was listening to MMA on points live chat the other day and PT Carroll was talking about how he wished with Shimiev they maybe put him against some lesser competition than throwing him right in there with Leon Edwards right now because you might get four or five more fights or maybe not four or five but two or three more fights where 
he goes in there and absolutely wrecks the guys. Um, and then you've a and you can, friend. Exactly. And you can justify it because he hasn't really fought anybody yet yeah. in the UFC. And, you know, so anyway, Joaquin Buckley, he looks like he's getting slow rolled. For me, I think he's he well outmatches Alessio in this one. I'm not sure how you feel about it. Yeah, pretty much the same, to be honest. Um, I think it's a very winnable fight for Buckley. Um, and I, I'd imagine the intention is to make the Kraus fight after this. I, there probably is a little bit of the UFC um, trying to, f- to feed off that hype around the KO. Um, Let's get another viral video on yeah, Twitter. I like, both guys have lost to Kevin Holland, no shame in that. I mean, Kevin Holland had one just, just off the back of one of the best calendar years any UFC yeah. fighter ever has had. But I mean, the Shirak was on a three-fight skid to Kevin Holland, Mahmoud, Muradov and Zach Cummins. I mean... Mm. It's not exactly elite opposition, is it? No, no it's not. It. Well, Kevin Holland is quite is very good, obviously, but I mean, it's very winnable for Buckley. I think that if if you want to look at the odds, it's uh, Joaquin Buckley at four to eleven and Deshirico at um, two to one. So yeah, I think Buckley here, and yeah. you can get Buckley at K, uh, by KO or TKO at even money, which I actually uh, w- would quite fancy. Um, yeah, me too, actually. We spoke about before. I think. One of the issues of Buckley is he's probably been a little bit that that viral KO has probably been factored into the his prices since that. Yes. Um, but I I think the KO here is is quite likely at uh, even money. Yeah. Um. And one thing I always do say is I do look at the guy, um, who I'm betting the KO against just to see if they've been finished before. And to his credit, the Chir- uh, Chirico hasn't. So I'm always a bit tentative to actually put a KO on someone who seems durable. But I think Buckley has incredible power when he goes for the finish and based on his last fight he does go for the finish um <laughs> when he wants to yeah so um yeah i like i like buckley here and um, so you're gonna say definitely bet on this one sean uh, i never say definitely bet. On this one. <laughs> uh, I, if you're gonna bet on something go yeah. for this one i think i i'd be i personally be betting on this one that's what okay. i'd say um as in with con with the condit fight and the ponzinibbio fight i probably won't be having a bet on those two fights so yeah i'll be having a bet on this buckley fight fair Puna Soriano against Dust, uh, Dusko Todorovic opens the main card. Um, this one um, is interesting because it kind of is a juxtaposition from the last fight because you have two prospects fighting each other. So with Buckley, you had a prospect fighting a guy who, let's be honest, he probably should be and the UFC are thinking he probably should be him. With this one, it's interesting because uh, Soriano, Todorovic, both contender series guys, we know the, U- the UFC and specifically Dana White, loves contender series guys because probably because cheap his contracts. name was on the show as well and they're, they're cheaper contracts yeah um you know he loves cheap contracts he does but this is a good one though i like this fight um soriano really wild goes for the finish mostly hooks no jabs or anything like that no setups just throw punches and try and knock the guy out yeah this go is a little bit more reserved and um, has that kind of lazy style not in a bad way in the kind of lured him into a false sense of security land your big shots so i think it's good matchmaking here um i don't always say that with prospect first prospect sometimes i like guys to get built up against some other guys but i think this is good matchmaking yeah i like it i mean they're two og they know i contend the series guys have yeah. both fought on it back in 2018 and they've probably both been a little inactive since then uh mm-hmm. D- Dusko uh, Todorovic has been inactive because he probably is the holder of one of the most of the weirdest stats I've ever seen. I mean, if you think about fights that have been booked three times and never happened, I don't think uh, Dusko Todorovic versus John Phillips is going to be very high on the list of ones. The fight that got I think, away. I think if you're playing pointless, you could well have a pointless answer there. Oh, very good, yeah. Um. So yeah, he, he was booked to fight John Phillips uh, three times in 2020. And it just didn't happen. I mean, I think the MMA, go- MMA gods might have done us a favor there, but uh, <laughs> he eventually got a win over Daquan Townsend in uh, October. So yeah, I, li- I like Dusko here as well. Um, I think he's quite exciting. Yeah, I think both guys are exciting, but I, I do like Dusko here. I think he's the better fighter. But uh, Soriano, as I said, does go for the finish and seems to have quite a lot of power. So I wouldn't be surprised if he drops him and, and finishes him. But in terms of skill versus skill, I think... Darovic is the better fighter yeah. here. I, mean, I think you, you could see this one been drawn into been drawn into a bit of a brawl and maybe been a, a fight of the night contender. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. If you want Good the odds, you can have um, you can have eight to thirteen around Dusko Todorovic and five to four on Soriano. See, I'm not mad at Dusko Todorovic, Carlos Conant, and Max Holloway in a treble. I'm not mad at that. I know you don't like you don't like some of them fights in terms of betting, but I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I mean, um, I would probably replace Conant with um, Joaquin Buckley personally, but yeah. What's the price difference? Is is it similar? So I will. Can I have? You want Dusko? 
So you can have Max Holloway to win, Dusko Tadarovic to win, and you can have Joaquin Buckley by KO or TKO in a treble oh, at just on the fourth one. And if like you it. take out Joaquin Buckley um, and put in Carlos Condit, that treble of Condit, Todorovic and Holloway pays just under uh, three to one. I like it. I like yep. both. There's I like a few both. options there for you. Yeah, either one. Um, prelims, we're not going to talk about uh, the full prelim card, but is there anything that really jumps out at you, Sean, um, for the preliminary card? Um, not the major to be honest one guy I was looking at was I think the, the prelim headliner is quite an interesting fight between Nasruddin Imovov and Phil Hawes Phil, yes. Phil Hawes is a guy who people probably will know a little bit about mm-hmm. Imovov is a guy who I, I was looking into he's a bit of an interesting backstory so he fights out of France the same gym as Francis Ngannou and Cyril Gain which is obviously quite a big gym now in France these days it's probably the hub really for French MMA um, but he's originally born in Dagestan which is quite interesting just because anyone who's into sport would probably be aware that the French have quite a long history of immigrant sports stars being from the likes of Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia. I mean, Zidane, one of the greatest ever sports mm. stars from, uh, I re- believe originally it's from Algeria. So there's, there's quite an interesting backstory there. I was trying to find out a little bit more of it because I imagine he does have quite an interesting upbringing and stuff. He doesn't speak a lot of English. Um, so it's hard to find any long form yeah. content, but um, yeah. In Zidane's last game for France, wasn't that the reason why he loafed your man, headbutted him into the chest? He said something about his mother... I believe, like yeah, Marco Matarazzi said something about his mother or his sister and he nutted him. Yeah, about Algeria oh. or something. Um, but yeah, I think yeah. Imavov's I think Imavov's a good bet here, to be honest. I was looking into it. I watched his last two fights. Um, I believe he was supposed to fight in a contender series, didn't, then got the call mm. up um, and was involved in arguably fight of the night in his debut um, against, who was it, Jordan Williams? Jordan Williams. Mm. Um, wild fight. He seems like a guy who takes a punch to get him going. Um, mm. But at even money here, I'd be quite happy to have a go at him. The only problem is Phil Hawes does have a lot of power, so you yeah. probably don't want to take that punch. Probably don't no. want to take it. But um, I will say that he, he's from, or he's born in Dagestan. Doesn't have a Dagestan style, really. No. Um, he has a very he- uh, striking heavy style. So interesting fight. As you said, Phil Hawes, a lot of people will be talking about him. Bit of a prospect. But if you look through his record, he's had some problems and he does slow down. So I, I wouldn't be too mad at your bet there, Sean. Yeah. Wouldn't be too mad at it. Uh, for me... Nothing huge stands out. Um, I like the Carlos Felipe fight against Justin Taffa. Heavyweights could be a sloppy heavyweight fight. Might be terrible, but uh, Carlos Felipe... Fighting the card. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Carlos Felipe, interesting dude. Fights, uh, his, his fights are very exciting, so he's one to watch. But that's it. We'll be back for Connor versus Poirier to break that card down. Um, of course, not just that fight, but then the whole main card. It's not bad, and the co-main event Crack as well is event. excellent. Oh, co-main event is excellent. Um, we won't be back for the midweek card, even though that midweek card is early for us, so it'll be nice to watch. And not only uh, is there, it's work. on during the day. During the day, it's like two o'clock. Yeah, hook okay. it. So uh, I like it. But yeah, subscribe to the channel uh, for that Connor Poirier breakdown uh, and more videos, and like this video, and we'll see you next time.